Hello, gamers. It's Life Spiller 79, and this is my podcast uh, called Spilling My Guts. Um, I was sitting there trying to think of a, a name for my podcast and um, kind of the spur of the moment kind of thing. And usually or typically that's how I work anyway. I usually do everything kind of spur of the moment. I'm, um, I don't normally write everything down. Um, the only time I write things down is that if if it's a whole bunch of things that I just got to go over or, or certain things that I just got to remember. But, um, yeah, that's how that name came about. And spilling my guts is just really just putting the message out there of what I'm feeling like or what I'm thinking about. So, yeah. Tell me what you think about that name. But um, anyway, today I just wanted to cover a few topics. Um, I've been noticing that it's been trending around a little bit every, you know, a lot of gamers have been talking about their gaming goals for the year. And I know it's already February, but I've been so busy. I haven't even had time, but I was just trying to think of a new podcast. So today I'm going to cover um, my gaming goals for the year. Some um, some news headlines or topics that came up that was kind of interesting to me. Um, I'll probably talk about um, some other things I might even do a little bit of venting about a few other topics and I might um, uh, start up a new thing where I do my afterthoughts on a video kind of like uh, after I already done the video, because the thing is the difference between a podcast and a video, you got more time to uh, get the listeners attention. Whereas a video, you don't want to sit there and have to watch it. Uh, you know, a podcast, you need to sit there and listen to the audio, walk away and just have it play wherever you have it play at and have it go. But I, I guess I'm going to start a new segment. Um, uh, afterthoughts, what I thought about the video, um, anything that I might have wanted to elaborate on, uh, but I didn't get to fully expand on it. Um, things that I got to touch on, um, even after responses that I've gotten back from other people and stuff like that. But yeah, um, first of all, I wanted to talk about my gaming goals for the year. As you, as you probably already heard, um, at the beginning of this year, I, I said I wanted to hit 500 subs. I'm currently at 330. So I could see that realistically happening because, you know, the average way I'm going right now, I should be able to hit that goal. I would like to hit the at least 400. Uh, let's see. What is this? I would at least like to hit 400 by the end of March. So I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to move that up to maybe five or six hundred or or not six hundred, but seven, probably seven hundred subscribers. I mean, and the way I've been pumping out the videos, I've been trying to keep it consistent with doing two videos a week you know, different types of variations of videos and stuff like that. So that's one of my goals that I have planned. Um, my next goal for this year is to, um, which is another one I'm going to have to change. I wanted to hit 500 games and I think I'm at like 490 or I haven't even done a recent count. Um, I keep a spreadsheet just to keep a log of everything. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure that out eventually. Um, but I'll probably rise that up to to about 600, 700. I want to complete Nino Cooney because it's been taking over my life. Um, <laughs> but I also um, am a player. I'm a you know, I'm a collector and I have a, I have a lot of games and I have a lot of systems. And so sometimes when I have a little downtime, I switch. I switch between systems, you know, like all my um Let's see. On my GameCube, I've been playing a little bit of Metroid Prime. Um, on my uh, PS2, I've been playing a little bit of uh, Simpsons Hit and Run. Um, and on my Xbox, I've been playing Panzer Dragon. Uh, let's see. On my Super Nintendo, I've been playing Castlevania 4. Um, also, on my PS3, um, i just been playing a little bit of Nino. Well, I actually... At this point, my character is almost at a level 50. Um, I've been putting in some serious time. I'm almost at 40 hours at this point. I think I'm like 37, 38 hours. I've been, but I, I know actual hours is probably way, 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 way more than that. 
So I've been really, really putting in some time. I think I'm about done with the game. I'm probably about 60 to 70 percent done. I um, probably got a little bit more left to go. So, yeah. And then also, um, I just started playing Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which I, honestly, I was against it, but I've been hearing so many good things about it. So I was just moved to to go pick it up. And I, I saw it one day um, for half the price. I saw it for like $29 or actually $30. And so I was like, man, I got to go ahead and get that. And um, so that's that's probably like my short term goal. The Nino Cooney thing, the um, the subscribers is probably a long term goal, which I'll probably change. Um, also, I want to get one platinum trophy on my PS3. I've never platinum out before on um, on my um, out of my trophies. I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gold trophies, silver, all kinds of stuff. Um, but I've never platinum out on a game. I've gotten close. Like uh, I think it was God of War three. I was like, I'm think I'm at ninety three percent. I just got to finish out. Uh, the challenge of the gods, man, that booger is hard because there's it's not like it's got one level. I think it's got 10. I, I haven't I beat it on hard mode. I think I even beat on Titan. So I've got those accomplished, but I haven't gotten to the point where I beat the doggone thing and platinum beat the uh, challenge of the gods. I, I even had a tough time with that on um, God of War one. I beat that on hard mode and, you know, all kinds of other modes. But yeah. So that's another one of my goals. That's probably going to be a long term goal. Um, I'll probably try to get around to focusing in on um, doing that. <laughs> but it's been it's been quite challenging, I have to say. I I, I, I didn't think it was going to be that tough to uh, platinum out. They used to give them out a lot more easier. I remember um, reading some of the top people to have the most trophies on or achievements on the Xbox side. Um, I remember reading the article in Game Informer, like uh, I think it was last year, some time ago. I probably still got the magazine sitting around somewhere. Um, dude, both dudes were about to crack a million um, achievements, and they were saying back then when they first started giving out achievements and trophies, man, they didn't know how to uh, measure out the system wisely, so they just was giving them away. I mean, there was a lot of easy games that you could just get a thousand achievements or platinum out on but um now these games are making it harder you gotta you gotta really really dedicate your time and you know i don't want to take away from the essence or the love of the game so for me if i only get like 40 percent or 50 percent of the trophies it's not that big of a deal but i would like to have the one platinum trophy <laughs> that would be nice um another goal of mine is to get a shelf i have been talking about that probably um, since last quarter of last year, like crazy. And um, it's it's been challenging because I guess for one thing, I was trying to find a shelf that would match what I have. And then because um, the one I already have currently is a certain color. And then I was trying to match that. But then I've been looking in thrift stores and stuff like that, trying to find one that was feasible or, you know, but then the, the next challenge is getting it to to my house because I don't have a truck, you know, and I um I might have to just hit up my brother in law and say, hey, can you go with me to the thrift store or go to the go, go to one of the uh, local stores and we're just going to buy one. My wife, she's been working with me to try to find something. And then also I wanted to get a game set up, um, basically have um kind of like an entertainment center or a TV stand kind of situation because right now i have like six con um, consoles hooked up in my back room i got my um let's see my original nintendo my original xbox um my super nintendo uh ps2 gamecube and my sega genesis um those are all hooked up I wrapped the cords up and everything, but the TV stand I have is really, really small. I need something big and she wants to get me an official game and set up to where I'll have all my games set up, you know, and um, all my systems locked in. But the cords won't interfere and 
I'm also looking for a nice little AV switch, which I know is really cheap. I've already, you know, searched online and stuff like that. So that's not going to be challenging. That way I could switch between each one because I already have a power strip. So my plug situation is fine. My cord situation is fine. Is more of the hookups to the TV and then also being able to just have all my systems at my um at my display or at my call whenever I feel like playing them. So those are my goals for this year. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing those things big time. Now, some topics or things that I found kind of interesting in the, in the news, you may have already heard about it. I don't know. Um, you know, there's things that's always, that's the thing that's changed with the world. Now news is always at your fingertips. So, you know, things change from moment to moment, but I wanted to try to pull out things that were interesting to me. Um, one thing I saw in the, um, I, I was on a game informer the other day and I saw that there's going to be a collection release. And I know that they are in the middle of doing a lot of these HD remakes or actually it's not even HD remakes. It's just a collection because this was already current. Well, the last gen, I should say with the PS3, um, 360 and the Wii but um they're doing a collections release and I don't know if you're interested in it but they have the Darksiders collection and the Red Faction collection coming out now the Darksiders collection um with Darksiders 1 we got War and uh Death with the sequel um that total is going to be $39.99 um that was over here in the states I don't know what price is going to be overseas and then Red Faction collection um, the red faction that came out and then the Armageddon, which honestly I did not care too much for Armageddon. So if anything, just to have that collection, because I wouldn't mind if it all come on one disc, that'd be kind of nice. That means they're, they're not going to be that many release, which will definitely be valuable down the road. So I would suggest to you, if you're a collector to do so, I, I know myself, I'll probably go ahead and do it. I might get two copies, keep one sealed and, um, and then use one for myself because I did love Darksiders 1 and um, I'm trekking my way through Darksiders 2. I just haven't even had the time to go back. I know I'm more than halfway done with that game. And then some other things that I found interesting. Um, I always go to the charts, the world charts of video games. Like I like to check on stats, figures, numbers. Um, I'm just that kind of guy. You'll um, you'll find that out about me. Um you know, I'm very inquisitive and I'm very insightful. And I'm, you know, the thing about me is that um, I love to learn as much as possible, not only about games, but I'm just a information guru type of guy. I love to pick up and learn new things. And if if I'm ever wrong on something, I don't mind people calling me out because guess what? I get to learn something else. You know, I, I've, I've been learning a lot of new terms and figures and statements and stuff like that. And and people sometimes just think that you just automatically just because you're in video games, you know, everything about video games. I had this discussion with, with a good friend of mine, um, Dave. Um, I'm a game geek and Javier. I remember having this conversation probably over a year ago. You know, sometimes people feel like just because. You've been in the gaming world for so many years that, you know, all this stuff like I have probably about 20, I would say 20, 30 percent knowledge on RPGs and JRPGs and MMOs and stuff like that. I've I've crossed over into the era and I would have to say probably over the last five years or so, I've really dived in and I've found myself playing those more. But at the same time. I still like to play the short term games because those games, you know, they require some of your time, especially for a person that works full time and has a channel and has a family and, you know, and other things that go on as well. So it's, it could be quite challenging. But um, anyway, I was looking at the charts and and I always look at how many games were sold this week for um you know, like when a game was first released worldwide, I don't look at just the one region. I, I think some people get caught up in that and they fail to realize that games sell worldwide. They just automatically think, oh, yeah, you know, like with the whole Xbox 360 and PS3 thing, 
people were like, yeah, 360 is dominating in the States. But but at the same time, 360 was suffering in Japan because there was a correlation that people could draw with Sony because it was Japanese, you know, it's, it, it was over there. So, of course, PS3 is dominating over there. So but when you look up at the worldwide total sales for that week, PS3 would be dominating. People would just get so caught up and say, yeah, you know, 360 is killing it in, in the States. But it's like worldwide. It's almost like saying my album this week sold uh, a million over here in the States. But if you look at my sales worldwide, I sold 10 million this this week. So what are you going to look at more? You're going to look at the bigger sales. So that's why I pay attention to the world sales. I don't look at the I don't just look at one region because, you know, stuff is sold in Europe, UK and all that. And uh, the States, and Japan. I mean, that's just one region. But anyway, I said all that because I was looking at the uh, PS4 um, has already cracked five million units and um, like five point one at the time that I'm catching it, you know. 5.1 and and I'm just thinking about in comparison to the Wii U its total um, lifetime sales right now is 5.7. So probably at this point, about the time you hear this message um, or hear this podcast, PS4 is already going to surpass, you know, we use total sales and then um, Tomb Raider definitive for the uh, PS4. I was looking at it. I guess it just only came out on that system or if it came out on 360, I just didn't happen to, or not the 360, but the Xbox one probably didn't see it, but it sold 140 K, which was pretty impressive considering the fact that it's already been released and people already have a version of it. All it is is just more enhanced version, more details. You know, of course they have different components. They got different specs that they can work with. They are able to expand and make things that much more lifelike. I watched a trailer on um, IGN.com about the uh, the making of the uh, definitive game for uh, Tomb Raider. Very interesting. Very interesting. You should check it out. Um, and then I just kind of wanted to get into spilling my guts about something that's just been getting on my nerves. Um, the rising of retro games. Oh, my God. This probably has been an ongoing brewing thing for me. It kind of pisses me off because in all seriousness, I'm a collector. Very rarely do I sell off anything in my collection. And if I do, I take the money and I go buy more games because my thing is. If it's something I'm seeking after, it's, it can get, you know, this this. This game can get a little bit. You know, and when I say game, I'm just talking about this industry. It can get a little bit out of hand. Like. I've been posting stuff about it and I, I don't know. I don't know if I made it known or whatever, but I have been looking for Zelda Wind Waker uh, for the GameCube. <laughs> and last year, just last year alone, I was going to get the game and it was like twenty some dollars. And that was easy to, to cop. Well, then they brought out the HD for the Wii U and it doubled in price. And my thing is there's a lot of people that just do it for the wrong reasons. And then they end up putting themselves in a situation where others who want the game and want to add it to their collection can obtain that at a reasonable price. Reason why I even say all that is that a lot of my Nintendo stuff, except for my, my original Nintendo, my game collection is it's subpar. I mean, like as far as how many games I got, because all, you know, the SNES and the GameCube. Oh, my God. The, the prices, if it even says Mario or Zelda or Donkey Kong or Smash or racing, it's going to be like thirty, forty dollars. And in a, in a in a person's mind, that's a retro collector or who uh, who buys retro games. We automatically go to the place of we only want to spend a few dollars on a game because that automatically means you can buy a bulk of games. Like sometimes when I walk into pawn shops, thrift stores, half price bookstores, mom and pop store, you know, any little barter stores or whatever. I want to buy a bulk of games, but I want to buy them at a reasonable price. Now, there are times where you do want to spend the money for the game because, you know, down the road, the value is only going to go up. 
But at the same time, it can be so frustrating because the game you covet or you the game that you desire long to have. Because now you you've been on this kick of wanting it, you know. And I understand some games are far in between, and I get that. But you can tell when a game's a platinum seller, it shouldn't be $30, $40, 50 Because right now, Wind Waker is about almost the going price is almost $50. And that's complete. That's not even mint. Mint is like 75 And it's just like, sometimes I just find it so absurd because I want to build up my collection and have a mass variety of games to play. Because I actually do go back and play my games. You know, at, like I was saying in the beginning of the podcast, man, I I play like almost actively play all my systems. The only why I probably don't play the other ones is because um, s- simply because I can't plug them all up. I mean, I don't have the display or the means to have them all set up. But yeah, it, it gets it can get it can get a bit redundant. I mean, with with the whole idea. And I understand that it's really just and you got to understand, just see through the fat of what I'm saying is that sometimes it's just frustrating as hell because there's games that I want to get for my Dreamcast. Those games are hard to find. Um, I want to get games for my TurboGrafx 16. I have to order those because nobody down here barely has any. I mean, they are definitely far in between. But when you do find the games, they start out like 15, 20 dollars. So you already know, OK, this is going to be a slow process unless I have. Unless I find a, a recent dealer that's going to sell a bulk of games at one time, you know, and it, it can it can get like that. So it's just there's times where I'm just like, wow, I'm just a collector. I don't really sell games. I buy games and I keep games and I have been on this kick this year to just buy the games that are pretty much up there at the top tier because really those are the games you're going to come back to. You don't want to buy a game and then just fill, fill in gaps. I mean, which is nice because you have games. I like to get games I've never heard of because there's, there's thousands upon thousands of games that I've heard of and it's, it can be ridiculous, but you know, being a gamer for 30 plus years, that's the, that's how it is. You know, when you've been gaming pretty much, 80 90 percent of your life that's that's pretty much going to take up a a big capacity so yeah that's just my little venting of spilling my guts now there was a hypothetical question that i saw um i i saw on um, one of the um, news blogs that i go to i go to a lot of places and i was talking about that with one of my good buddies but um it actually was talking about what would games look like in 20 years? I'm going to say that again. Uh, what would games be like in 20 years? I've been asked this question about future games, but I've never been, you know, asked that far or that stretched down the road. So I thought about that one day. I was like, well, what would games look like? Of course, they're going to be realistic. I've seen um, images of what could be or there are possibilities out there like being in a 3d world environment like actually being dropped in and you are actually you can see the environment and everything no helmets no 3d glasses just being in there and it just makes me just think back to pong all the way up to now we're looking at this generation with the ps4 and the xbox one like with the um with Titanfall coming out in a few weeks and then we got um infamous Second Son coming out and just makes you think about the details, the the accuracy, the art of storytelling, um moral decisions that you can alter a game, you know, by making a certain decision. I mean there games have evolved in such phenomenal ways beyond the comprehension of one own one man's mind. So I guess to me, I would um, I feel like there will be a point where we'll be able to dip our hands into an actual environment and feel because if I look down 20 years down the road with the technology that we have, the TVs that we have, the 4K, 8K TVs and stuff like that and how the images look like just like you looking right at this person right at that moment live or whatever. I'm thinking we're going to be able to dip 
into that environment, we're going to actually be able to feel the coolness of the water or the breeze or the wind chill from the snow. Whatever element that you're in at that time, you are realistically going to, you know, it's going to be a part of you. You are going. I, I even feel like they may even have, you know, some people get leery or get real spooked out by the word chip. But I, I feel like it's going to be something like that. Um, maybe like a chip added into the brain cell, almost like. You know, um, like instantly into your system, not. And that would only be the gaming experience. It would be a part of you. It would go into a certain part of your brain where your brain could actually open up. And you could tap into that. It's <laughs> it's so many angles that you could cover that at. I mean, I know it gets a little absurd or it sounds kind of off or whatever, whatever you're thinking. Um, but yeah. So that was just a, a, a few things that I was thinking about. And then um, and then my afterthoughts on the TurboGrafx-16, you know, being able to just elaborate. I have appreciated all the uh, the comments and people have told me and it sounds like people have had some great experiences with getting theirs. One dude said he found his in a bin. He found like four games in a bin and they were really cheap. And I was like, wow. But my history with the TurboGrafx 16 is real nostalgic, man. It, there is so much incorporated with my emotions, with my feelings that are tied into, it takes you back to a certain place. So I'm, um, I'm glad I got, got the TurboGrafx 16 back. I have been wanting that. The unfortunate thing is, like I said, those games are hard to find unless you go online, which currently that's what I am planning to do. I have found a group of games and, you know, like I said, I'm gonna try to buy a bulk of games at one time and, you know, that be the thing. And, but yeah, I, I remember a lot of games, Raiden, Bonk's Adventure, Ninja Spirit. I even remember now that I have time to even go back and talk about it. I remember the first Street Fighter with Ryu with red hair and like a, a white, um, I'm trying to think of what it's called, the the attire that they actually wear, but it was white. And I think Ken was in there, too. But that was the first Street Fighter. And oh, man, I I was blown away because my homeboy, I had convinced him to get one, too. He ended up getting a TurboGrafx 16. And then I remember the CD-ROM expansion. And um, that was kind of crazy being able to all you had to do is slide your little chip in your uh, TurboGrafx 16 cd chip into the slot and then you have your actual cd and then um then also the turbo express the little handheld um it was one of the first handhelds where you could take the experience and put it in you know the only problem with it was saying that the battery life was awful <laughs> but then i saw the turbo dual the turbo dual looks pretty awesome itself it's a combination of the two it's already got the cd player to the right and then on the left you got the chip then you got the pc engine the small it was like the smallest device or smallest console um you got the pc engine it's another another um i guess another design i can say of it i mean that was kind of cool it's all these other uh, variations that are out there man there's probably about six or seven and actually happy console gamer which is one of my favorite youtubers dude exp he expanded on that and he was talking about all the variations of them and he actually completed the set so he's got them all man there's so many um other little systems out there that you know i'll probably be buying consoles forever I'm almost done with my Nintendo set. Like I got the original NES, the Super NES, um, the Nintendo 64, the GameCube. I had the Wii and I might get the Wii U down the road. So those are only two right now that I don't have from the Nintendo era. And somebody asked me, will I start doing um, imports? Most definitely. I've I've been interested in the Famicom for like two years now. I've just been trying to find one at a reasonable price. Um, I might get the Retron. It's spelled R-E-T-R-O-N, the Retron 5, which is coming out 
they've been working on getting all the bugs and everything out. Um, it's going to play uh, the original NES, Super NES, the Famicom, Sega Genesis, I think Game Boy games, and um, I think something else. But all of them are cards, so it's all cartridge games. But yeah, man, I um, I I have to say that I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and I'll keep doing this until I'm tired of doing this, man. Um, I um, I really appreciate all the fans and all the uh, the comments. You know, people I get to talk to every day about games and, you know, and just enjoying it. And I've got new, you know, even younger dudes that are like, man, I'm I just seen your show for the first time. And, you know, they're like, is it weird to love games? I'm like, dude, you're talking to man that's like twice your age and still play video games. And, you know, you're forever going to have the negative side, but. If the positive outweighs, just go with that, man. Don't even worry about it. You know, I've I've continued to do this in the shadows and now I get to do it in the light where everybody knows about it. And if they don't like it to hell with them, it's not no big deal. I mean, it's this is what I do. This is what I love to do. But, yeah, those are my topics that I just wanted to cover today. And that's it. I'm like Spiller 79. It's my podcast spilling my guts. And I'm out.